Welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. You know, the upcoming election of the House of Counselors is just months away. Perhaps it's a good idea to talk now about the dynamics of the election system with regard to the House of Counselors. Once again, Michael Chuchek is joining me. We're going to talk about these kinds of things. How are people voted for in the House of Counselors? There's a kind of a, a bifurcation of voting blocks, voting districts, and a proportional representation. It's really gotten complicated over the last 15 years or so. What's the picture of it now? Okay, in the House of Counselors, what the division is, the idea is, is that we have to save a few seats for the minor parties. So they have a proportional vote, in addition to a vote based on the districts. And the districts in the House of Counselors, like the United States, where the, the senators and House of Counselors members are called senators, they, they represent entire states. Here, until this year, they represent entire prefectures. That's The House of Reps has much smaller districts. Mm -hmm. But the district representatives, when they say district, it's a prefecture. Uh, up and and there are some s small changes that are happening this year due to population. Right, the it, proportion, it, the um, demographics of it have, right. have changed, and so two two of of what were four uh, districts are, are now have now been created. But we'll get into that later. In the on the basis of that, the the district seats are basically can only be fought out by big parties. It's either going to be the LDP or the DPJ. Very, the Komeito doesn't, it has people in the House of Reps who are district representatives, but nothing in the House of Counselors. It's, it's, it's one of the two parties. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a, it's, it's the only place where there's a really a two party system. Now that would be terrifically unfair, and then the smaller parties could not sign off on that. So when they created this new system, they had the second set of seats, which were handed out proportionally. And it's handed out, you can, you, you, your ballot is there. You you put the vote of the person that you want for the district, and then on the other side of the ballot, you vote for the party. You vote for the party, or you can pick a name off the party list and put that person there. Mm -hmm. Now, that was there so as to indicate that really people who are really popular nationally. This was basically in, invented in, in a sense for uh, Heizo Takenaka, who, who was the, the economist who ended up number one on the list because he had so many hundreds of thousands of people voting for him. Uh, it's, to say, it's sort of the popularity contest yeah. that really popular people can indicate, you know, the people are behind me. I, I've gotten this number of votes. But they always have to be on a party's list. Mm -hmm. And the proportion of seats is, is basically handed out by the, the votes for the party. Now, that allows the communists, the socialists, and all kinds of other micro parties. Everybody to, gets a kind of a free shot. It gets a shot. A, a fair shot. And, and, and there's no 5% cutoff point or any mm -hmm. kind of that. It, it, it's how it's handed out according to what's called the Dehont system. And there's talk, talk about changing the system now. But mm -hmm. nevertheless, it gives smaller parties a chance to at least have proportional seat members. Right. So uh, that's great for them. It allows them to get in. But for the big parties, the proportional seat system allows them to reward their supporters. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, for me, the really interesting part of the, uh, the election. And, and it's sort of the, the cynical part of the election, that where interest groups, big interest groups, get to buy their way on into the diet, basically. Right. Uh, and when I say big interest groups, I mean groups which have hundreds of thousands of members so that the parties are basically serving as patrons. Right, to for the National Association of whatever. Whatever. Dentists, medical okay, practitioners. Okay, so let, we, can go, we can do the breakdown. The LDP is going to have candidates from the Private Postmasters Association, it's going to have candidates from the National Medical Association. It's going to have the candidates from the physical therapists. It's going to have radi a radiologist from the Radiologist Association. And it's going to have people from the Japan Chamber of Commerce. So national associations get their candidates on the list, and then they do politics amongst themselves. The doctors all get an Inside email or, 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 or a mail saying, Vote for this person. He's the doctor on the LDP list. Mm -hmm. DPJ does it too, but its members are usually either 
and these have a really narrow base, is former officials, either national officials or local officials, mm -hmm. but more importantly, in terms of associations, are the labor unions. So that there's a real split, ostensibly, between the DPJ as sort of Japan's labor party. And when I, big unions, the auto workers union has its candidate, the uh, postal workers union, which, I mean, there are post offices all over Japan, their workers have their candidate on the DPJ mm -hmm. list. This is something that each side does to try to organize its vote based on national membership organizations. So when people talk about popularity, they talk about the, looking at the polls, you have to understand, at least for the proportional list, that's not where the action is. Mm -hmm. You know, what that, it's how many associations you can cajole into sub sending up a candidate so that they can do their own manipulation of the vote or, or, or get, get out the vote effort for their member. And, mm -hmm. and there, there was always the joke in the U.S. Congress or the U.S. Senate, uh, this is the senator from Microsoft. In Japan, yes, mm -hmm. that's exactly it. There is going to be a senator on the DPJ list from Toyota Motors, uh, or at least their Toyota Motors union. There's a Matsushita union member on the, the DPJ list. Yeah. Let's back up just a little bit and put this in a historical perspective. So the House of Counselors used to be known as the House of Peers. Basically, the members were appointed by the emperor they to, were. to sit in a stable... Um, Permanent, uh, wise person's group. Right. Basically. Six years, you're there. You don't have to worry about the, the whims of, of change that might uh, be suffered by people who are in the lower house, whose house... Who, who, whose election can be called at any time. That's right. In the House of Counselors, okay, after the, after the, well, the, the occupation abolished the House of Peers, uh, which was similar to the House of Lords, in, in, and replaced it with an elected House of Counselors. Six-year terms, you sit, you, you, there is, there's no dissolution. The, the House of Counselors is the permanent institution right. of, and, of, of the bicameral legislature. And, and basically, the seats were assigned by prefecture. From the fir the first one wasn't, but they've been assigned by prefecture ever since. But in the 1993 reforms of the House of Reps, there have been reforms on in terms of the proportional listings. Okay, and that, that reform is really important because what's happened since then, it used to be very wealthy, very stable um, individuals, maybe company presidents, something University like that. University professors, it really was. And, and then, now it's become something of a funny house, hasn't it? But the thing is, the funny house aspect really reached rock bottom in the 1990s. And unsurprisingly, the voting rates in the House of Council, for, for House of Councilors elections, bottomed out in the mid-90s mm -hmm. at, at less than 50%. Whereas in the House of Reps, it's never been below 50%. In the House of Councilors, it became the silly places where the, the comedians went, the, the wrestlers, where, where the, the, wrestlers the, stars, the actors, right? the, the, the singers, whatever. They would be put up because it was the silly house. Mm -hmm. But then something really important happened. The opposition took control. And the House of Councilors could finally stop whatever came out of the House of Reps. Right. At that point, the silly house suddenly became Very where valuable. it's at. Right. That whatever the situation may be in the House of Reps, and the House of Reps has turned over dramatically in several successive elections, the House of Counselors is where the break gets put mm -hmm. on. And what Mr. Abe has declared is his goal, and it's a pretty feeble and lame goal, is he wants to make sure he has a majority. Well, of course he does. He doesn't want his revolution to end. Uh, but they've got far better prospects than that right, right. now. Well, I mean, he already has a majority with Komeito in the upper house, and the goal here is two-thirds. It's unlikely that that's going to happen. But the the functional result of having these the, the proportional representation and the district representation is that also among members of the House of Counselors, there is a pecking order, isn't there? So people who are running in a district and they collect votes are probably of a more valuable status than people who are on a list. And as the, um, the numbers come in for uh, a political party to receive five, five seats, then they just go through the numbers. And uh, that, that would seem that somebody who is actually out campaigning 
and receiving votes from individual voters. I mean, even in the, the, the congressional quarterly, the Binlan, here, it lists the people who, what their, their votes were. And so you can look through here and say, well, I, I understand that you got, you know, X 70, number of votes, 77% yeah. of the votes. And uh, that's, you know, in, in, in historical perspective, you are really powerful in this district. Yeah, you know, they, they do, there is a definite hierarchy. It's nothing compared to the hierarchy that exists in the House of Reps, where they, they call people who are, who lose their district seats, but return on the party list, they call them zombies. Mm -hmm. And the zombies are considered the living dead, and there's no way that they can call the shots inside the party. They, they're, they're there, they're just bodies. But on the, in the House of, of Counselors, because they have that six years, and it's, and it's set, a person can get in on the House proportional list and really make an impact because that person is a permanent institution, has an office, has a, a podium to talk from. And so, while it's not the greatest to be on the party list, mm -hmm. it's not a really bad situation right. either for the individual. And certainly persons can be quite, come quite influential. Well, especially for those candidates who are coming from national associations, probably in the six years they're going to learn a, lot, a little bit about politics and how to actually be an effective politician. Well, there's certainly, there, there are some people who step down from the House of Counselors and then try politics in, on the, the, uh, the blood sport level in the mm -hmm. House of Reps. The, but uh, for the most part, it's a nice place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're not expected to do a lot, especially if there's a, a majority in the House of Reps, because just like we had with the budget, the House of Reps passes the budget, it gets sent to the House of Counselors, but it, according to the Constitution, doesn't matter what the House of Counselors does to it. 30 days later, mm -hmm. it's on. Not as sexy and as interesting as some of the political scandals that we talk about from time to time, but these kinds of details are important and they help you understand what might be happening as different pieces of news hit the press. Please stay tuned.